So you can't pick, sweep, or tap fast, but you want to play the hot licks with the cool kids. Well, lucky for you, there's an easy trick that you can use to play licks that are faster than a cheetah on a speedboat. Like this one. Hey there kids and welcome to a brand new Shredtastic installment of Weekend Wang Shop. Here's your best buddy, Uncle Ben. On today's lesson we're going to take a look at a technique that you can use in order to make licks that sound way harder than they really are. And you don't have to be able to like alternate pick really fast or sweep or any of that fancy stuff. I've heard guys like Eddie Van Halen and Nuno Betancourt use this technique all over their soloing. And with a little bit of planning you can start putting together a couple licks of your own to utilize this and start burning up the neighborhood today. But as always, before we get into it, let's hear it again at Stepdad Speed. And as always, you guys can find full tabs on my Instagram page over at Ben Eller Guitars. Just search for hashtag Weekend Wave Shop 240, find the tabs, learn how to play it, then upload a video of yourself shredding through it, along with hashtag Weekend Wank Shop. Downloadable tabs, bonus lessons, and the backing track I use at the start of this video are available to my lovely supporters over on my Patreon page at patreon.com slash benellerguitars. There's all kinds of goodies available over there for you guys, so be sure to click the link in the video description and sign up today. I'm also going to be uploading a very special Patreon-only video to go along with this lesson that shows you guys how you can use this technique to play wicked arpeggios like major 7 and minor 7 and all that stuff. So, if you become one of my patrons, you can check it out. Thanks a bunch. Okay, so let's dig right into this technique here. This is taking place over an A, C, D, A kind of power chord progression in the key of A minor. And what we're playing here is basically just the uh, this special technique walking through a couple different positions of the good old A minor Panasonic scale. Also known as the Pentecostal scale to Southerners like me. Now what we're gonna do to start with here is to play that fifth fret on the high E string with an upstroke. Now on the B string, here's the, the real kind of trick to this. What you're gonna do is to quickly hammer on your little finger to the 8th fret B. Notice I didn't pick that note. I did an upstroke here, and then I just quickly hammered that finger down. In order to make this sound as clean as possible, what you want to do is, you know, after you do that first upstroke, and then you slam this little finger down on the 8th B, let go of this finger. Check it out. It doesn't have to be as dramatic as what I'm making it look like. It can just be the slightest little release of pressure humanly possible because you don't want to take your finger off as fast as this lick is you don't want to take your finger off of it but basically just kind of loosen up the pressure on that first finger whenever you do that hammer on onto the eighth b now after you do that hammer on what we're going to do is get another note out of that thing and do a pull off here to the five on the b so so far you've had three notes but you've only picked the very first one really essential that you get that down right there do not pick that note it's just a hammer on from nowhere Van Halen style. Again, he's done this in like a billion of his solos, so it obviously works pretty well. Now after this, what you're going to do is to play the 7 on the G, and we're going to do a downstroke on this note. Okay, so it's up, hammer, pull, down. Notice how this first note stands a little proud of the others, and then the other ones just kind of roll by as a quick triplet. A really important thing to notice about this is this kind of latching first finger movement that I'm making to make this work here. Because since you're hitting the 5 on the high E and then immediately going to that 5 on the B, you need to be kind of, you know, lightly barring those two strings. I'm not going from fingertip on the E to fingertip on the B that quickly and cleanly. It's just not really possible. But what you will notice is I'm starting off in kind of a position here where I'm barring both of those top strings. And whenever I do that hammer on onto the B string, I kind of unlatch the bottom of my first finger just a little bit right there. You can see it's not so much of a movement of my finger as it is me slightly pushing my wrist forward. Do you see how whenever I do that, whenever I push the wrist forward just a little bit, it will take my high E string out from under my first finger, just like that. So the tip of my finger is still on the B, which is where it's gonna to need to be here in a second, but I can just kind of latch and unlatch like that to get on and off of the high E string without actually lifting my finger off. Now the way that I put this lick together, what you're gonna do is to play the entire lick two times, and then you're gonna play kind of a shorter version of it where we just play the first three notes. So the fifth high E, that hammered eight B, pulling to the five 
want to be. So you got two of the entire lick and then one of the short version of it. Just like that right there. Now what I really want you to focus on and how you're gonna get this technique down and get it like burning fast is to kind of divide and conquer. Because basically while you're doing this technique where you know, you're picking some notes, you're doing these hammer-ons over here, you're doing another picked note and you're starting over, it can kind of become that whole, you know, pat your head and rub your stomach thing where it's just kind of a lot going on to concentrate on what's happening with both hands right there. So what I want you to understand is with this lick, even when it's played at extremely high speeds, the right hand is barely doing anything. And the way that you're gonna really get this down is to divide and conquer and just concentrate on this hand at first. Even whenever you're playing this lick at extremely high speeds, if you concentrate on what just your pick is doing, it's extremely simple. I'm gonna be going here from an upstroke on the fifth high E to a downstroke on the seventh fret G. And even at that speed I was just playing, the picking would just be doing this. It's really simple. I'm gonna do that again and then fill in the notes with the hammer-ons and stuff and you'll see what I mean. Practicing it that way with just the right hand getting that groove down first, bounce between those two strings, is how you're gonna beat this here. So really get that down super cold, you make sure you're grooving on it really well, and then start trying to fill in the gaps with the left hand notes. Slow, of course, at first. So you notice there in the first position that we played, we had a single note, two notes for the hammer-on pull-off, and then a single note on the next string. It's really important whenever you're using this technique to group them that way. One note here, two notes on the next string, one note on the next string. So the next thing that you're gonna do here is to move up to the next position of the A minor pentatonic scale. So what you're gonna do in this position is to play that eight on high E, hammer on to the 10th B, pull off to eighth B, and then play the nine on the G. Okay, and again, there's that one note, two notes, one note kind of configuration that you need to make this technique really rip. So you're gonna do this just like what you did in the first position, two times long, one time short, two times in a row. Long, long, short, long, long, short. And then lastly, we're gonna move into the next position of the scale here, which is gonna be starting off on that 10th fret high E string, the D note, which pairs nicely with the D chord you're playing over at this point. And uh, your notes here are gonna feel basically just like what you did in the first position. You're gonna have that 10 on the uh, high E, hammer on pull off here, 13 to 10 on the B, and then you're gonna play the 12 on the G. So again, exactly the same shape you started. And you could say this kind of feels like D minor pentatonic at this point, but it's not. It's still the A minor pentatonic notes. Same deal, two times long, one time short, two times in a row. And then lastly, end by resolving. I just did a little slide here from the 12th G sliding into the 14th G, which is an A note to resolve against an A chord. So the whole thing will sound something like this. So whenever you play this technique with kind of a more open approach without any palm muting, that's kind of how you get that more Eddie Van Halen-y kind of sound. During the intro, I ran a little bit of phaser here on my uh, Fractal Axe FX3 to get a, you know, even more Van Halen-y kind of sound, get that cool kind of cycling sound going through all those pull-offs and everything. It sounds really neat. But another cool thing that you can do too, if you want it to be more like a Nuno kind of sound, is to uh, really aggressively palm mute those high strings right back here at the bridge. Some of you youngins might have heard like Rick Graham doing this stuff too. Rick is like the master of this muted legato stuff, but he'll be the first to tell you he got it from Nuno Betancourt from Extreme, who is one of my favorite players ever. Love his stuff. So basically, if you can just take the side of your uh, picking hand there, and you gotta really put it very close to the bridge. You can't be, you know, over your middle pickup or your neck pickup or anything at all when you do this, or else you just you'll just crush those top strings, you won't hear anything off of them. You gotta be back at the very back, you know, of the string. And a lot of people think that they're doing this technique wrong because whenever they do it slow, there's zero sustain. It sounds like a, a muted banjo or something. Listen, if I try to do this slow with the palm muting, it sounds worthless. 
Like that's not a sound you'd ever use while you're playing slow. Notice how the notes have no sustain. But the thing is, when you're doing this stuff fast, it doesn't really matter that there's no sustain. It's actually to your benefit that the notes only last like a nanosecond. I'll show you two more cool things you can use this technique for too. So for one, you could easily take this idea and make it work through an entire minor pentatonic scale. Again, the real key here is arranging your notes so that it's single note, two notes, and a single note. Of course, you could do this with all kinds of different shapes and stuff too. But like for example, with an A minor pentatonic scale, right? There's two notes on every string in there. So like what you saw in the first position of the lick, you can easily go one note, two notes, one note. Now you could do that all over the scale if you wanted to. Like for example, you could play here on the 5B, put two notes on the G string here, seven and five, and then play the seven on the D, It'd be like this. Another cool thing you can do in that position too is if you're playing like the blues scale, where you got that eighth fret G string in there, for that little flat five interval, you could use that instead. So you could play five, eight pulling to five, and then the seven on the D. It's got a good wicked sound to it. The other cool thing I want to show you too that you can do is, you remember how when we learned the lick it was like the long part, the long part, and then the short part? That short part was just three notes, like that. Just the upstroke and the hammer on and pull off. Well you can just put that short lick on repeat and play really fast triplets. So essentially all you're doing is upstroke, hammer, pull, on repeat, and that's it. Again, you gotta kinda latch that first finger on and off right there to make it sound clean. But especially with a little bit of palm muting, it really helps to sound, you know, really ripping and really aggressive. Another thing I'd like to point out here is that the picking on this isn't exactly mandatory, as in starting with the upstroke, doing the hammer on pull off, and then doing the downstroke right there. I like doing it that way because I've always been kind of more of an outside picking kind of guy. Uh, but some of you guys might find it very odd to start this lick with an upstroke. So if you're more kind of accustomed to starting with a downstroke or you're more of an inside picking kind of guy, you could always just flip to picking on this to make it a little bit easier for you. So it's harder for me that way, but you might find it to be better. So basically you do that by starting with the down, got your hammer pull on the next string, then upstroke on the G. So that'd be down, hammer, pull, up. Like I said, to me, that is bass backwards, but some of you guys don't like starting with upstroke, so it's worth putting out there. So another thing I want you guys to work on too is mixing up the use of the long four note pattern with the two pick strokes and the short three note one pick stroke pattern. Really work on trying to get those down so well that you can just randomize them and completely mash them up into whatever order you want to. That's part of what makes those really awesome sounding Van Halen licks like what you hear uh, towards the first of the Panama solo. They just sound kind of like out of control and they're all over the beat. They're not necessarily like fitting into the bar just right. They just sound like random rock and roll fury and that works for me. So be sure to take your time with this. It's one of those things that took me a while before I could really get it up to speed and do it nice and fast and clean. The real keys are that latching first finger here for the left hand. You know, being really aggressive with your pick and being aggressive with your hammer-ons and pull-offs here too if you're like really light, you know? You're not really going to keep up with the volume of those pick notes if you're doing a really soft hammer-on pull-off. So don't be afraid to really get in there and, you know, savagely attack that string. If you need to work on those hammer-ons from nowhere, I recommend learning that first tapping part from like Hoffer Teacher by Van Halen. That's a great one that kind of has you starting with a left-hand hammer-on rather than, you know, a right-hand tap. So that might help you with that kind of stuff. So again, the latching first finger, aggressive hammer-on pull-off, aggressive pick attack. And don't forget, a little bit of muting goes a long way to make this stuff sound really articulate and mean at the highest possible speeds. Thank you guys again so much for watching, and like I said earlier, if you want to see how I utilize this technique to play blazing big-ass arpeggios, be sure to check out my Patreon page, patreon.com slash benellerguitars. You all can follow me on Instagram at Ben Eller Guitars or on Facebook at facebook.com slash Uncle Ben Eller. And if you're interested in booking some one-on-one -on -one Skype lessons with me, be sure to drop me an email, benellerguitars at gmail.com. It's where you can reach me. Well, thanks a lot for tuning in once again, weekend wankers, but it is time to depart and get to practicing. Less clicking, more picking.